Steve, starting off with uh, the Q&A, the fans have sent all their questions in. We're going to start off with a nice, easy one, I'm sure. Carter from Mulgai is asking, what is the best part about being Scotland manager? The best part? I suppose the best part is the same as any football manager's job or football head coach is winning games. I think when you win games, you realise how important it is to people in the country. So, yeah, just winning games. A lot of fans have naturally asked about that night in Serbia as well. Uh, and in particular, Lewis, Liam and Ian have all asked similar questions about those crucial moments after the full-time whistle. How did you keep the players focused through extra time in Serbia after conceding so late, Steve? I think it was just to re-emphasise the, the, the fact that we'd, we'd been the better team over 90 minutes. Um, we certainly didn't deserve to lose the goal at the end, but we did. Lack of concentration cost us a goal. And if, if I'm honest, the, I mean, everybody talks about the performance in the, the 90 minutes has been one of our best. But I thought the way we dug in in extra time was, was absolutely top class because a lot of teams would have folded, especially given the circumstances and the fact that we'd waited so long and we were so close. I thought the team showed a lot of character in, the, in those 30 minutes and obviously the penalties at the end were the, were the icing on the cake. But I, I think to get through the 30 minutes without conceding and losing the game was, was, was absolutely massive for the, for the players to do. Ian from Ashington has asked about the penalties in particular and that save from David Marshall. I mean, it's easy to talk about that, isn't it? But what was, he's asked, what was going through your head when, when Marsh made that save? I think... What was going through my head was actually the fourth official had just come to the bench just before it and said, even if he saves it, don't run towards the goal because we have to check on the VAR. And I just looked at him and I thought, you've got no chance, mate. And, and that's the way it turned out. So <laughs> that, that, was, that was really it. And when, when David saved it, then obviously everyone just started running around like, like lunatics and celebrating. And, and thankfully the, the VAR came down on the other side. Uh, a lot of fans are looking ahead, of course. Um, Alan from Giffnock isn't looking quite as far ahead as the Euros. He's asked uh, about the upcoming World Cup qualifiers. And with this being your first full qualifying campaign, Steve, is there anything that you will look to do to try and ensure that best possible start? I think it's a it's an unusual situation in that we're doing the World Cup qualifiers and the, the international break before the the Euros, which is, which is completely unusual. Uh, my biggest concern is that we concentrate only on the World Cup qualifiers. We, we have to park the Euros till the summer. So everything in between now and March is geared towards the World Cup qualifiers. I don't really understand people want to talk about the Euros and they want to talk about the fact that we're in the finals for the first time in 23 years. But the games in March are more important in my mind than the actual tournament in the summer because we want to get off to a great start for the World Cup qualifying. It's been a long time since we qualified for the World Cup finals. And we, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're in Qatar. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go straight on to the, on to the Euros, though, because, uh, as you can imagine, a number of fans have fired their questions in. Paul from Grangemouth, in particular, um, has, has asked, what do you think would qualify as a success this summer, our first major tournament in such a long time, of course? What would qualify as a success, I would imagine, would be the, the first Scottish team to get out of the group stages uh, and, and into the knockout stage of uh, a major tournament. So that would be the, the initial target. And then obviously beyond that, you, you would hope to go as far as, as, as possible. James from Bridge of Weir has asked, since we haven't been to a major tournament in a while, do you have to go about preparing the squad different mentally ahead of the Euros? I think the, the preparation will take care of itself. Obviously, it's very difficult to finalise preparations because of the COVID situation. It's very fluid and, and changing all the time. Hopefully by the time we get to May, we'll be able to go with our original plans. We have we have some plans lined up. We're not going to announce them just now because there's obviously too much uh, speculation and, and uncertainty as, as to how everybody's going to be dealing with it, the COVID virus come that time. So we have some plans in place. We have some alternative plans in place. And obviously, we're all sitting here and hoping that the, the Euros will go ahead in their normal format. And if they do that, then we'll, we'll be fully prepared and ready to give our best. James from Glasgow has asked a, an interesting question. What identity do you want to build with this team going into the Euros, given that abundance of technical ability he's talking about in midfield? Our identity is, I think the first thing you have to identify with any team is, 
it's winning matches. You want you want to be a team that wins. Now, everybody wants to be part of a winning team that, that plays fantastic football, but sometimes that's not possible. So the first step in that is to make sure that you win games. And if you become successful, and in recent times the team's been a little bit more successful, although I'm very mindful of the fact that we lost the last two games. So we have to build on that. The performances were good, but the results were poor. So sometimes it's better just to have good results and, and build the confidence. Team identity will, will, will come from the characters and the individuals that, that play in the team. And obviously different teams will have different identity. Different players will bring different characteristics to the team. It would be nice to have a team that can play in many different ways and, and be successful going forward. There's a number of fans getting in touch about specific players and, and some of their performances at club level. Jimmy from Montreux is just one of numerous that's asked in particular about Ryan Gold and what are your thoughts on his performances? I think rather than go down to any any individual, I've said all along that the the door to the, the squad is always open. Uh, every player, all they, all they can do is give their best week, in, week out for their club and then it will come down to my my judgment, my assessment, what's good for the squad, what's not good for the squad, what will improve the squad, what will not improve the squad. I think sometimes there's always a clamour to speak about the people that are not in the squad. The boys that are in the squad have done fantastic for us. Uh, after such a long wait, those boys, or the majority of those boys, deserve a chance to, to play in the finals. So, yeah, we can look outside, we can look for other people coming in to push the squad because that's that's natural. And, and even in a football club, there's always someone coming along to take your place. You want that fight for places in the squad. You want that fight for places in the team. But also, also be mindful of the fact that we've spent a little bit of time building up a good squad spirit, a good mentality within the squad. And it's important that we continue that. On one of the players in the squad, of course, is... Again, topical for various reasons. Uh, Gordon from Airdrie has asked, as well as a number of others, about Scott McTominay, who's been obviously playing well for Manchester United in the midfield. Gordon asks, are you now considering playing him in the middle of the I park? I always consider playing Scott in the middle of the park. But at the moment, the or the last time we, we were together as a as a group, Scott's position was one of the back three. He, he played it very, very well. Uh, we've got other options there as well. We've got options in midfield. And like I ju just touched on previously, is to have the the most options you can have in the in all the positions across the pitch. And Scott's obviously done very, very well for Manchester United this season. And I'm sure when he comes to the squad in, in March, if he's if he's selected, then he'll do very well in whichever position I decide to play him. Harry from Air, first of all, was keen to offer his congratulations on getting to the Euros, and then he followed up with. A question about players with dual nationality, perhaps for Scotland, you touched on that, about players pushing and, and helping the squad. He's asked about the likes of Che Adams and Angus Gunn. Are these the sort of things you'd look at? Always looking, you're always looking to improve your squad, but it's a two-way street. They have to want to play for Scotland before we can go down the route of trying to invite them into the squad. So it's, it's always been a two-way street. I believe that both those players have been contacted before about playing for Scotland and and haven't decided to go down that route. So well, let's just wait and see what happens with, with the dual nationality boys. You know, it's again, it's important to remember that the boys we have in the squad are, are the most important ones. Uh, if other people can come to the squad and help us, if other people want to come to the squad, if they're dual nationality and they want to make themselves available for us, which is what Lyndon Dykes did. And obviously Lyndon has been a big success for us. So. That's how it works. You know, if, if, if any of the players that have got dual nationality want to have a conversation, I'm sure they can get a hold of my number somehow. And then, then we can take it from there. Graham from the Noons asked an interesting question, Steve. He says, there's been some unexpected player performances and results in sport in general, uh, which could be attributed to having no fans in stadiums. Could your tactics change depending on if there's crowds or not? Do you take that sort of thing into account? I don't think the tactics will change, but sometimes the, the, the mindset and the mentality can change. Uh, there's definitely been a, a difference in, in results and performances uh, and the way some teams have played, maybe without the pressure of the crowd on them. Some teams, I think, have probably missed the, the pressure of the crowd pushing them for, for bigger performances. And there seems to have been a little bit of a levelling out among, certainly in the domestic leagues, a little levelling out among the teams. Uh, International-wise, 
I mean, I'm I'm really really hopeful that we will get some kind of crowd for the for the games in the the summer months. So if that happens, then like I said, it'll be more a mental thing than a tactical thing. The the mentality of the players might change a little bit, hopefully for the better and and not for the worse. Lachlan from Cumnock, Steve has asked. Um, he's watched you being incredibly successful with Kilmarnock taking them to the highest place, finishing the league and now leading Scotland to an international tournament. And he's asked, what do you think that you as a manager have to bring out the best in the players that you coach? I've got no idea, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just do the job the way I do the job. I, I think the fact that I played the game at a good level. Uh, I've never been out of the game since I was 17. Always involved. I've evolved with the, with the game, if you like. You know, sometimes... People get stuck in a certain area, in a certain era. I don't don't move with the times. I've always moved with the times. I've always tried to mix up my coaching staff as well, so that they're always challenging and pushing me. And even recently in the Scotland squad, Alex Dyer left to be the command manager, and, and John Carver came in. So always looking to change, always looking to adapt, trying to get the best out of the players, trying to to find a way to simplify the game for the players you've got to make it as as easy as possible for them to win matches. My, my job is to prepare a team in the way that I think they'll get results. And if that's been reasonably successful through the course of my career, then that's great. Sam from Port Seton asks, what are you most looking forward to about the Euros uh, yourself, not just as a manager, I'm sure, but going to a tournament of that calibre? Well, as a player, uh, I never managed to do it. It's always been one of my ambitions to go to a, a major tournament with my country. So. They managed to do it as a player, which is a shame. But to go there as head coach will be will be a great experience. Uh, I go there to to try and enjoy it. But I know what I'm like. I'll only enjoy it if we're successful, and and, and that's the bottom line. You know, I think the the two games at Hamden will be great if we can get crowds in. Will be even better than great. And obviously the the trip to to Wembley for a game against England will be will be a a great occasion. But it'll only be a great occasion if we can come away with something from the game. So positive results and hopefully a great summer for us, for everybody involved. Coming towards the end, we've got a few fun questions for you as well, Steve, that have been sent in. Were the fun questions. Ross from Edinburgh. <laughs> Ross from Edinburgh has asked and touches on what you were talking about, actually, but how much focus you can afford to have on the Euros during the World Cup qualifying games. You, you spoke about that briefly, but can you even think about it or is it all focused on World Cup No, nah, no, no thought. The, the squad that I pick in, in March will be a squad to win the, hopefully win the three World Cup qualifiers. That, that has to be the target. We, we have to come out of the March games in a position that gives us a chance to qualify uh, going into the autumn matches and that will be the sole focus. There'll be, I can't say there'll be no I can't say there'll be no uh, mention of the, the, the Euros when we get to March, but everything about the Euros will be dismissed on the first 24 hours and then we'll be concentrating fully on, on the World Cup qualifiers. Because, Like I said before, for me, the World Cup qualifiers are more important than the, than the tournament in June. Some, some quick fire ones for you, Steve. You've been asked uh, if you're collecting them. Have you completed your Panini sticking album book yet? I passed it down to my grandson. I'm not sure he's, I'm not sure he's completed it yet. And uh, it wasn't, believe it or not, it wasn't just questions that we, we were getting sent to us. Um, Adam from Bishop Briggs actually said, uh, is there any chance that I could maybe join the coaching staff if you're in need, just so that I can go to the games? You can send over his CV if you want as well, he's offered. Yeah, you can put his CV in. I'll, I'll put it in the pile with the rest of them. <laughs> Perfect. Steve, thank you very much for your time and answering all the questions. Uh, the fans have loved getting in touch and we've appreciated you running through those. So all the best moving forward too. No problem. Thank you.